Chapter 4, The Fairground at Garston. Every year, the fair would come to Garston, and I really looked forward to ride the dodging cars. All the kids would go to the fair and spend lots of time watching. I can remember two brothers who worked on the fair, and these were like heroes to us, and we would wonder who was the strongest and speculate which one could lift a dodging car above his head. We'd also listen to the latest pop music, which played through large loudspeakers. This was before anyone had personal radios or cassette players. There was no Top of the Pops on TV, so the fair was the place to hear loud pop music. I was probably about 11 or 12 years old. And this year I remember stealing three pounds from my mum's purse. I felt guilty and bad at the time and still feel guilty to the shame as I write about it now. But this was spent on the fair. I'm thankful for the truth that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us from all sin. This became my only way of dealing with sin and still is. My brother at the time had a paper round and got up early each morning to deliver papers and began to earn his own money. I can remember him obtaining all sorts of things like writing cases, pens, pencils, ink cartridges, etc. All the little things one would like to have but could not afford. I soon realised that my brother was not buying these at all but stealing them from the shop where he worked. On the odd occasion I would go and help him deliver the papers. I enjoyed this as it took me to places I'd never been before. On one occasion we had to deliver papers to a hospital or residential home and around the back of the building we could see the kitchens and we could help ourselves to the cakes which had been freshly cooked. I learned from my brother how easy it was to get things I wanted. I always looked up to my brother and often envied the things he did and had. I remember him going to Switzerland with the school and him coming home with all kinds of goods, like a walking stick, flick knives and badges. Flick knives were illegal and to have a flick knife was a good thing to have. My brother soon got into bows and arrows and air pistols and swords and sheath knives, all of which seemed good to me. In fact, we used to hide these weapons under the floorboards in the shed at the bottom of the garden. At this time, I remember Mum and Dad buying me a new bike. It was a red Californian with curved crossbars. I thought it was great and was ever so pleased with it. One day, the bike went missing and I knew someone had taken it, so I was very upset. While I went looking for it, I noticed up the road an accident had taken place. As cars were stopped and people milling around, to my horror, I saw my nice new bike crumpled just lying at the side of the road. The boy who had taken it had been knocked off the bike and was lying in the road awaiting an ambulance and everyone was trying to take care of him. I thought to myself, never mind him, he's stolen my bike. Look at my new bike, it's all bent. I was very upset. No one, however, took any notice of me, neither were they concerned about my bike being damaged. The boy's name was Michael Abbs and he had been a friend until then and I seem to remember he had broken his legs or legs on that occasion. My interest in radio, which we now call electronics, started the day that I heard a crystal set operate. I must have been about 11 or 12 years old. My mum and dad belonged to the Camping Club of Great Britain, and every weekend we would go camping to Chertsey, where we had a tent pitched. One weekend, my brother stole a crystal set from a camper's tent. It consisted of a small tuning condenser in a blue plastic case and a crystal diode together with a set of headphones and I was amazed at it working, and I became interested in radio from that day forward. I sent away for a set of parts to build a two-transistor reflex receiver and put the thing together as best I could. I wired the circuits as I thought the diagram showed and crushed it all together to fit inside the plastic box. It didn't work, and I was most disappointed. I didn't realise that all the wires were short-circuited together when I crushed it into the plastic case. Another friend of mine's dad helped me out. He was a radio technician in the Royal Air Force and he built the receiver and showed me how to wire circuits up. From that time, I began to learn about how things worked and taught myself many things with the help of others. Another friend of mine's dad, who had a radio workshop, and I was very envious of all the equipment he had in the garage. I remember the boy being able to and confident enough to take apart an old radio set for me to get a sensible part that I needed. I was quite impressed. I taught myself a lot and began to learn about transistors. One day, on the way home from school, we climbed over a fence of someone's back garden 
and we discovered in the shed radio parts and equipment. There were valves, tuning condensers, transformers. We took what we wanted and thought no more of it. This hobby was to last me a lifelong time and helped me lead me to a job in radio television servicing and to technical college. During this time, I had no sense or knowledge of God and was unaware that God did not dwell in buildings made by man, and I'd stopped going to Sunday school. About this time, I managed to break into a workman's hut, which was at the gravel pit, situated at the far end of Coates Way. Me, along with other kids, would play there during the evening and climb on top of the workman's working shed. There was also two large tanks of hot water, and we would dangle our feet in the water and wash ourselves after getting dirty. On this occasion, we managed to break into the shed and managed to steal a wireless radio. It was a valve receiver in a wooden box. I took it to pieces and saved the working chassis and had it in my bedroom at Coates Way. Somehow the police were tipped off and they came to search our house for the stolen goods. I was thankful that I'd hidden the wooden cabinet as they found no evidence of the break-in.